Lysga may not be a name you've heard of, and neither had we. With manufacturing based out of China and an R&D and design office based out of Germany, Lysga have been building electric bikes for over 15 years. The MD5 electric mountain bike from Lysga is offered in several variations around the world. And today we're reviewing the Veletrix Ascent Plus, a model that's been rebranded for the Australian market. It's a rehub electric mountain bike that promises to offer the same performance as higher end rehub mountain bikes while maintaining a lower price point. It comes with a 36 volt 13 amp hour battery mounted on the down tube, a design we're beginning to see more and more on electric mountain bikes. Although it's not the most attractive way to mount a battery, having it secured on the down tube provides the best balance on an electric mountain bike. The design takes it one step further by enclosing the controller beneath the battery so it's not exposed to the elements. Both the mounting of the battery and controller are critically important when choosing an electric mountain bike. If you do really plan to use your electric bike off-road, the location of the electrical components must be considered. When speeding through a rock shutter, you don't want the battery to move or rattle from side to side. There's no sound or rattling at all coming from the battery. While many manufacturers are integrating their batteries, we found that while descending and manoeuvring through tight corners, you don't want the balance of the bike thrown off by having a heavy battery integrated through to the head tube or sitting in the rear of the bike. The front end feels nice and light and easy to manoeuvre because you don't have that integrated battery extending all the way through to the head tube. You don't feel anything is at risk of getting damaged or falling off, so you get more time to enjoy the trails instead of worrying about what might fail. The Ascent Plus features 21 assistance levels with three power levels and seven speed settings within each power level. Although not removable, the large backlit LCD is centered on the handlebar with all readings easily visible, including the BMS voltage, a feature not found on many OEM e-bikes. The LCD is great to look at and an excellent addition on a bike at this price point. And the positioning of the thumb controller is excellent because it's so close to your hand, so it allows you to change assistance levels also while keeping your eyes on the trail so you don't get distracted. If you're buying an electric mountain bike, you want hydraulic disc brakes. The Tektro or Iger Comp hydraulic brakes are usually offered on more expensive e-bikes, but yet they're featured on a bike at this price point. And the brakes have plenty of bite to them. They could do with a little bit more modulation because they don't take much to fully lock up the rear wheel. Like you just sit there and Now while both rehub mountain bikes we've previously reviewed were equipped with torque sensors, the Ascent Plus comes with a cadence sensor, which detects when to give you assistance based only on the pedals rotating. The cadence sensor picks up on movement really quickly, and that's thanks to the 12 pole magnet disc. But because it is a cadence sensor, you have to anticipate gear changes much quicker. And that's to prevent you going into a store if your pedals slow down too much. It doesn't pick up on the torque that you're putting through the pedals to know when to give you assistance. Assistance pickup is excellent, and the cadence sensor handled mud and rain without randomly stopping. Four times out of five, assistance engaged in less than a quarter turn of the pedals. And because the cadence sensor is so quick at picking up movement from the pedals, if you do stand up off your pedals and go over the rough stuff, you'll see that I'm not even doing a full revolution of the pedals, and yet I can engage assistance. I'm probably doing less than a quarter turn and assistance is still staying on and that's what makes the e-brake you know so helpful is that if you don't want that motor to engage 
you've really got to keep a close you know grip on that lever in case you're coming around the tight bend or you just purely don't want any assistance to kick in the cadence sensor can also be a little tricky to control on tight technical trails with tight bends and i often found myself going wide on open fire trails this won't be a problem but when you do hit tight single trails it's best to turn off assistance while descending if you don't need that sudden jolting power now there's a short climb i'm approaching that really challenges some of these rehub mountain bikes so let's see how the ascent does <laughs> wow its performance really reminds me of the neo jumper and the 36 volt bionics equipped ktm lycan its torque is very similar if not on par with the bh neo jumper but yet it feels just as light as the ktm lycan because of the positioning of the battery. We then headed off to some private property and had the Ascent Plus top speed unlocked to see how much potential it had. So let's see what it's got. I'm on the highest gear. Push it anymore. We then got up to 35 kilometers an hour on throttle alone with no human input, which is an impressive result if you consider that we're off road and the surface isn't smooth. The yeah, Ascent really has gotten all the basics right for what's required for an electric mountain bike. You know, good torque, secured battery. Great brakes, good balance. And for a bike starting, you know, at $2,100, it really is great value. There are some choosing the DIY route for their first e-bike and finding an e-bike kit and frame might be your thing. But for others who are looking to get into the e-mountain bike scene without the headaches and steep learning curve, the Ascent Plus is a solid performer and really does represent excellent value.